name is Matthew Johnson. Many of you in class know me as Matt, so welcome to my humble abode, my place of peace, my man cave, if you will, or according to my wife, this is where she sends me when I'm grounded. So, <laughs> however, for this project, uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, uh, thank you and give kudos to our great professor who is thinking outside the box uh, because of product with uh, projects like these. Um, we're working on sustainability right now, we're using technology, and I'm not using any paper. So, first of all, let's talk about dematerialization. That's the tool that I've chosen. Um, so, I'm more of a visual learner. So, give me one second. I'm gonna show you dematerialization in its truest form. Here we go. All right. So, see here plastic bottle. I know many of you are thinking, hey, what's this guy doing in class? Sus uh, sus sustainability class, drinking water out of a plastic bottle. Well, I'm going to tell you why, because I'm very knowledgeable about dematerialization and I've been able to work my magic. So, dematerialization at its finest. Here we go. Alright. See how I did that? But, that was a cool trick, but that's not really um, what we want to talk about when we're speaking of dematerialization, especially in terms of sustainability. But for my assistant here, his name's Alfred, so we'll give, give Alfred a hand. Thank you, Alfred. But what dematerialization is, it's defined as the reduction of total maintenance and energy throughput um, of any product and service, and thus the limitation of its environmental impact. Now, that word throughput, <laughs> full disclosure, we don't use that often, but it's simple enough. It states that throughput is the amount of material passing through a system or process. But to break down dematerialization a little more, it's very simple. You use less material, less stuff, and in return, it equals less waste. And pretty much the focus of dematerialization is to improve our environment by recycling, reusing, and um, by the way we consume things or or by using or by less consumption so with dematerialization there's some strategies um, and so just to list a few um, some of the strategies that we could use would be to design and manufacture smaller products um, we could use lighter products or other green materials um, and instead of um, sending letters all the time um, we could try using less paper by using emails, whether at work, with our family, things like that. So with dematerialization also, there's a cost. So what is the cost? Well, in terms of putting it into practice, I don't have an actual figure for you. However, um, in order to switch over your technology and, and um, whether it's at work or at home, there's going to be a cost to that, plus finding new ways to do things, new processes, course you're going to have to pay for that. So with um, the cost though, there's cost for everything. So let's talk briefly about business and about home, but let's talk about business first. So with business, there you have what's called internal cost and external cost. Now your internal costs are things like your labor, um, electricity, water for the office if you have a water cooler, paper, ink, things like that. All of that goes into overhead. So when you go and talk to your boss and say, hey, I think I'd like a raise, those are the things that they're going to list and probably say no because our overhead is too high at this point. However, no one really thinks about the external cost of running a business or of your home, at least not daily, which if we're going to be a sustainable planet, um, or work towards sustainability, you have to think about that. So in terms of your external costs, you're going to think of things like what does it cost to dispose of your products? Um, what is it doing to the environment? Um, and what about health problems? I know we have insurance plans. If, if you have a job that offers insurance nowadays, um, I'm sure you're still probably paying a lot for that. but all of that figures in and all of those are external costs. I remember my grandfather worked at the mill for many years and 
it seemed like he was always getting sick of something. Um, now, it wasn't cancer, thank God. They, that wasn't uh, <laughs> anything that he had to deal with. However, just being there, being around all the chemicals and things like that, there was a problem. Um, so, now let's look at um, internal costs and external costs in your home. So, internal costs of things that many of us buy and use every day. So, for example, lights or food or um, clothing, things like that. And along with your place of business, there's also external costs. And that's quite simply waste. I mean, waste and more waste. Now, we know that the trash man comes once a week. Recycling guy comes once a week. Where does that go? It all goes somewhere, whether it's in a landfill or they burn it or put it somewhere else, and I'm not even sure. And even then, it's going to produce more waste for them to get rid of it. So today, though, I like to think about what could work. I mean, that's the overall goal, right? Of sustainability is finding new things. Um, so Peter Bar Bartimus, um, in his paper, uh, dematerialization and capital maintenance. There's two sides of the sustainability coin. And in that paper, he talks about ecological st sustainability and economic sustainability. So in terms of the ecological sustainability, um, that, to put it simply, is the dematerialization of economic activity to decrease planet deterioration. Sounds simple, right? And so you try to sell that to some of these big businesses, um, which leads to economic sustainability. To put that simply, is capital maintenance. So, trying to find ways to sustain our planet with the use of dematerialization, but keeping everything as far as economical or as far as uh, terms, or economical terms. This, he says maintenance in there now. When I think about that, not too many people, including my boss, are just going to want to maintain, right? You think about the, uh, the American dream. So the goal of the American dream is to own a big house or have a successful business and to keep on growing. But how do you do that and still take care of the planet? Or how do you expect to dematerialize and, <laughs> and still make money? That's the question, right? So when I think about those together, like I said, that's not the American dream. Not many people are gonna, gonna think about doing that. So I came up with $64,000 question. What if we got real with people and explained to them, look, we really don't have that much planet and we keep taking and taking and taking from the planet. And what's going on? What are we going to have left? We're not going to be left with anything. So the appropriate thing to do would be to dematerialize. Um, before, you know, I would actually walk in my office and complain about all the paperwork I had. And I'm talking about monthly reports, billing reports, um, billing reports for the monthly reports. Um, incident reports, all of that, and all of that is done on paper. We have boxes and boxes on top of boxes, not to mention boxes of ink next to those boxes, and we go through all of these materials daily. What if, in business, we could start small and spend a little bit of money now to save the planet and save a lot more money in the future? So what if we could take all of those products, put them on a computer, and then, for example, when I go see clients in the field, I have a laptop. Those are put right into a computer. And the only paper we'd have to use would, when, would be when we print them off to have our clients sign it, things like that. So that's one way that we could kind of merge those things together. Um, I believe that's called synergy. And synergy basically is doing what we can and meeting a need and serving everyone involved. So. The next question would be, how much dematerialization do we need in order to sustain our planet? Now that is a really good question. I have no idea for you at this point. Maybe by the end of our course, 
I'll be able to speak with you a little more about that. We are learning a lot. Thank you again, Professor. Appreciate that. Um, so for right now, I'm not sure what that answer is. I'm just going to be honest with you. But what I do know is as individuals, there's no way that we can control big business because right now everything's about profit, profit, productivity, getting as big as we can, using as much resources as we can. But what we can control are things in our own home, in our lives. So before I leave you today, um, I'd like to talk about some basic sustainability principles that you can handle in your own home, in your own lives. So number one, <laughs> and my lovely wife isn't gonna like this, but we talk about it all the time. So buy less stuff, which means <laughs> We don't have to go shopping every week or every time we get paid um, or things like that. Or maybe uh, I was thinking about instead of you know buying a bunch of toys or plastic um, for our nieces and nephews and our children, maybe we start a college bank account. Who knows? Things like that. So that's number one. Um, number two, eat fresh stuff. I know my, my wife gets on me because... She really doesn't get on me. I get on me because I'm starting to get a little little gut bag. That's because I like to eat stuff like pizza and all of that. If you think about it, pizza comes in a cardboard box and all of that stuff has to be taken in the trash, put in the landfill, and all that creates waste. However, what we have done, thanks to my wife, is every Wednesday we have a soup and salad night, which is actually good. She mixes it up. Um, number three. What if maybe once or twice a week, we could use public transportation? I know some jobs, mine, I'm not able to do that right now. However, in most cases, going to trainings and things like that, I guess I could carpool um, on days when we just have meetings or if I'm going to class, um, could ride a bike there. I think that'd be a, that'd be a good way to, uh, to do that. Um, number four, we need to preserve um, our water. <laughs> We don't have a lot of water. Water is precious on this earth. Uh, so we should try preserving our water. Matter of fact, like I said, I'm a visual person. So let me, let me do another trick for you and I'll show you how to do this. Let me get ready. You guys ready for this? All right. <laughs> I should be a magician because I just rematerialized this. But like I said, Visual person, that's me. I have to learn by doing so. Great step. Plastic, not easy to dispose of, but I do. I've been using um, our school water system. It's really cool. And when I'm at home, simple as that. When I'm talking to you guys, my mouth gets a little dry. It's perfect. Preserving water. Um, and that's number four. Number five. Um, in terms of basic sustainability tips, share things with people. <clears throat> I know we do two, um, two yearly yard sales uh, where you know, people come and they're able to get items without having to go purchase new ones and create more waste, that type of thing. But what if we could share everything, like share a meal with a neighbor? I mean, that, that's just being gregarious, right? Um, or, I have a perfect example, my smoker which is huge, metal, this big. I'm great on the grill. Smoker, not so much, it takes too long. I, I wanna eat, so <laughs> I make food, it's, un, it's not cooked all the way. Anyway, I shared that with my brother-in-law. He's great at it, he loves it. And I didn't have to throw it away or take it somewhere so it can sit, rot, and kill our planet. Um, number six, what if we use less paper? Now, I thought about this for a while, and professor, like I said, kudos, because projects like these help us work on sustainability. Um, but what if classmates, talking to you, what if we went to all of our professors and said, look, sorry, we're going green. I can't write any term papers. I don't wanna use, <laughs> I don't wanna use the paper or the ink. I don't know how I'm not, how, I'm not sure how well that would, uh, <laughs> that would go with our professors, but it's just a thought. Maybe we might look into that. Um, and number seven, before I leave you, um, 
Number seven, know your ecological footprint. Um, when we first started this class, we were tasked with jumping on, logging in, and we did an ecological footprint test. That can tell you a lot. I think the secret with that is to do it, do it more often. So as you go through um, these tips and try to change some things in your world, um, go back and see if you're doing what you can to dematerialize and help save and sustain our planet. So that's it for me today. Um, I'm speaking to you from the past. I'll see you in the future. So I'll see you all on Tuesday. Thank you for joining me in, uh, in my basement. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.